G'day guys, and welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today, we're gonna to take a look at a video called Five Types of Single Mums You Should Avoid. And this is by uh, a YouTuber called Your Wingman, and I'll link the uh, original video for you all to watch and go and check out in the video description. So without further ado, let's have a bit of a laugh and see what kind of advice we're gonna get. This is a true story of single mama drama coming from a viewer's comment. Just the tip number one, no matter how hot she is or how amazing she seems, you have to automatically assume as a single mom, she has lower market value than you do. I'll give you the tip here, and this is what I always say to guys. It doesn't matter how hot she is or how, how great she may seem, she, she's a single mom. And what's the reason why I meet the reason why I sort of, I don't judge all single mums. I understand that some are there by circumstances out of their control, but I'm talking about the plenty of fish single mums, some bumble and hinge ones. You know the ones I'm talking about, the ones that have gone and, uh, you know, left a husband or a long term relationship because it wasn't working for them, even though they've got like a fucking six month old kid, that sort of shit. They're the ones I bag out, guys. So it's not every single single mum out there. All right. But what do I think? It doesn't matter how hot. When I used to come across these single mums, um, we come across a hot chick on a dating app, Bumble, Hinge. Uh, you read in the profile or you swipe and match them. You're like, oh, fuck, this is all right. And then you go and read their profile. You know, single mama of four little baby boys who are my world or whatever it is. And she's an attractive woman and all that. And you think, how did you end up in this position? Like, you're an attractive woman, world at your feet. You, you had what probably was a, a family life with a, a husband or long-term partner, and now you're on the dating apps at 29 or 28 or 35, whatever it is. Like, what have you done to get there? What life have you destroyed of a guy, probably put a guy in a psychiatric hospital to go on dating apps because you got bored and you wanted to chase, you know, the tingles, the feelings. That's what guys think when a woman is a hot single mom. It doesn't matter what she looks like. She does have lower value for that particular reason that she's a high risk to you she's done it to someone else she's going to do it to you and if it's a you know the father of her children and she's gone and done that to him i've had women in my comments you know carry on oh yeah, yeah. what about abuse and all that sort of thing yeah sure no circumstances leave of course i'm not promoting to stick around for that but just dumping a guy cold on his ass let's be real that's what happens a lot of women get bored or they have girlfriends who are out there on the dating scene who are gassing them up, the Jedi High Council, as I talk about. And then they put stuff in their head. Oh, your partner should be doing that or your husband should be doing that or whatever it is. And then they go, yeah, you can do better, girl. You can do better. They go and dump their husband and they end up on dating apps for 25 years on Plenty of Fish trying to get something back that they had already. <laughs> it's just it's stupid. That's why I have a go at them. Tip number seven. All. Oh single moms are more selfish than single women without kids. They have to be. So fellas, no matter how lonely you are or how desperate you feel or how amazing she might be, you must avoid these five types of single mama dramas at all costs. Welcome to Just the Tip Tuesday. Okay, so let's Just go through this story, and along the way, I will reveal the five types of single moms you should avoid at all costs, and what this poor fella should do. We're gonna call this fella WTF, because seriously, once you hear his story, you're gonna be like, what the Flintstone? And yes, we feel for you, WTF, so bear with us here. We're gonna give you some advice. So WTF writes, I've been dating a single mom, mid thirties and she makes assumptions about what I'm doing. And then she makes those assumptions like they're fact. Yeah, because she's doing those exact things. So she's she's um, projecting or gaslighting her behavior onto you that what she would be doing because she's getting a bit of a sniff of the stuff that she already does. Oh, what a trick in the book. First type of single mom you should avoid at all costs is the I'm always right, you're always wrong mom. Now. Lots of women are like this, but it's even more amplified when you're dealing with a single mother. If you <laughs> want to know the reasons why other women, not necessarily single moms, always think they're right when they're not, then you want to watch my video, why she thinks she's always right when she's not. I will put a link. I'll tell you why, because people never tell women that they're wrong. And that's why, even with this channel, guys, um, I just call women, I just call out the truth. I say things that are true. I'm not saying things that are nasty. I might say things in a bit of a joking way that it might be a bit crude at times, but 
I'm not saying it's not true, but I've had people say to me, you, you, you're a misogynist, you, you hate women. I love women. I just love calling them out on their bullshit. And that's what my channel is about. But what, what, what is it? What is it why, why a lot of women can't accept or will argue black and blue in their face, even though they're completely wrong with something? No one ever pulls them up on it their entire life. And the moment that they're challenged on it, they cannot comprehend that they're wrong. It's like a child. It's like a, a 12, 13 year old girl. Think, picture that. Um, you won't buy her something from the shops. You take her down to Westfield, you know, and she wants you to go and buy her something and you won't do it. And she's going to argue black and blue and nag and everything all about that. It's the same when you're arguing with a woman who's never been told that they're wrong or they can't have something. Just can't comprehend. Get the end for you. Yes, I will. But any woman who thinks she's always right and never wrong, especially a single mom, is going to make your life a living H-E double hockey sticks, especially when it comes to matters of her kid. WTF goes on to write. So I had a situation like this. I'm working my third shift and, you know, she was talking about this pumpkin patch event about a month ago. She always brings her kids to the pumpkin patch every year. Okay, that's a good thing. She's talked about it a few times leading up to the date and says, you know, if you can't make it because you're too tired because of sleep, that's not going to be a problem. Now, so far, this is actually looking pretty good. She seems to be considering his health needs and his work needs, and she's giving him notice that this thing is coming up. But stick with us because this story is going to change. Okay, but here's in. just the tip for men who are considering dating single moms. Never promise something unless you're willing to throw your life on the line to deliver, especially when it comes to her kid. And don't make promises for the kids. That's that, that that's what I can't really understand, guys. And the reason I say this is, yeah, sure. Um, I come from the perspective of a guy who has no children. So I, I do understand, look, it is different for men who have kids. It's, it's pretty hypocritical if you've got two or three kids of your own saying you won't date a woman with kids. This doesn't apply, I guess, to that situation. What it applies to is young men or men themselves who don't have that lifestyle getting involved and becoming instant dad to a family and, and a child that's not yours. I just can't understand it. Do not throw out maybes because maybes are as good as solid promises. Remember when you were a kid and you got a maybe? That maybe was as good as a yes to you. So you, it's not just that you're gonna disappoint her, but you're gonna disappoint her kid and that's just not fair. So you're better off to disappoint up front and then maybe deliver under promise and over deliver especially important when you're dealing with somebody else's kids. Remember, that kid did not choose to be in a broken household. And if she's trying to give her kid a sense of consistency and stability, that's a good thing. That makes her good. It's a good thing that maybe in, what is it, 80% or 90% of the cases that the woman has initiated that divorce from the man. So if she wanted to give the kid stability, it should be with the actual father, not with step-in dad, Mr. Stepdad coming in and being Mr. New Dad. The new, the new dad for the year or for the six-month period, and there's always some other guy coming in, bagging her in the middle of the night while Phil Donahue is on. I can't understand that. I want consistency for my child. Well, you should have put your carnal desires. You know, you wanted to get out there and bang heaps of dudes and get attention or whatever it was, you're bored. You should have put all that to the side. You had the kid. So don't come. You want some other dude to come in and give your kid consistency. Guys, do it. Guys, go in there. You're going to pack her up. You're going to put her kids in a car and you're going to be Mr. Instant Dad because you're trying to get action. You'll do anything. Guys, guys are stupid. They'll do anything. You'll, you'll, you'll go and get a little um, a, a, a little minivan. You're going to hire a little van. You're going to take all the six kids and her, her six kids from four different dads. You're going to take them up to uh, SeaWorld. You're going to take them up to DreamWorld. And you're, you know, you're going to spend 10 grand on them. And you won't even get any action. <laughs> Good mom. Now remember, good moms and good partners are not necessarily one and the same. So just the tip go. number two, I've already said it. Maybes that turn into no's are far more disappointing than if you just said no from the get-go. Okay, let's get back to WTF. So the day comes along and she wakes him up to say, hey, we're going to this thing. Are you coming? If you are, then you got to get up right away or we're not going to make it on time. And he's like, I can't. I got to sleep, work, health. Got to do it. 
So she leaves and she's, she doesn't say anything, but he can tell she's pissed. Which brings us to type of single mom to avoid number two, silent but deadly. Also known as passive aggressive. Now, gentlemen. I think it's just women in general. Passive aggressive, but uh, women can be very cold like that. I've had um, experiences with long term girlfriends where they'll just shut down, shut down on you, not talk to you uh, for long periods of time. And they do it on purpose because they know it's. Um, it's a it's a type of uh, torture. It's very nasty to be on the other side of, very nasty to be on the other side of. And so, I always say this: I say women can be the most nastiest, ruthless, just soul destroying creatures on this planet if they're done with you. So if you're in a marriage or a relationship with a woman, uh, it's not going well, and you're not even getting talked to in your own house. You're walking on eggshells. Everything sets them off. Um, no matter, you know, you can't do anything right. You can't breathe. You can't breathe. You, know, you can't kiss them on the cheek. Or, they just hate your guts. And they're silent. All right? That's a lot of guys deal with. But it's not just single mums. It's women in general. Once a woman turns off, there's no trying to get it back. And that's not necessarily the case here. But it does bring it to attention that you want to avoid women who will walk away seemingly calm but allow her anger to fester only to get you back later. If she gives you the silent treatment, you may think you've gotten off easy, but she will torture your soul later. Yeah, coming from a woman. So if she pretends everything's okay, but your gut feeling says everything's not quite so okay because she's kind of punishing you in other ways, like maybe she's withholding affection, saying yeah. she's got a headache, but you know that's not true, or she decides to go to her mother's for the weekend, but takes all the leftovers, so you've got nothing to eat. Or she's been ignoring your texts or not replying very frequently or with short messages. But Yeah, but you know what she's doing when she's doing that? She's writing on Bricey. She's got Bricey on backup dial. She's got him in the hidden uh, Snapchat file, um, Snapchat folder app, you know, and she goes, oh, Bricey, um, I don't know, fucking beta Barry at home. He's pissed me off because he's worked, you know, 18 hours a day for the last 10 days straight and he's asleep. He wouldn't take my little crumb crunch and kid out to, you know, the Jurassic World ride at SeaWorld. Can I just come and bounce on you? Because I want to get feedback on, on Beta Barry. <laughs> it says she's just been distracted or busy, but you know that's not true. Distracted or on a big anything schlong. unusual but aimed to hurt you. That's a major red flag. Passive aggressive. Silent but deadly. So... Here's where this is a little bit applicable to this particular situation. She let him sleep right up until the time where they had to leave. She didn't say, hey, we've got to leave in half an hour. Or can you be ready to go? She was like, we got to go right now or we're not going to make it. And then she bailed right away so that he didn't even have time to get ready if he was <laughs> going to get ready to go. So she could later be mad at him. That's a red flag. WTF says she just walked out and like he's up 10 minutes later and ready to go and she's busy texting him all angry and pissed off because he wasn't ready like instantly upon waking. It's not single moms. This is basically five kinds of women or five treatments I have to put up with. But let's hear her out. So about halfway through, you guys. So if you're enjoying the content today, please subscribe to the channel and watch the video shoot at the end. That's what gets me out there and I would greatly appreciate it. And if you do want to support the channel, check out the Patreon link in the video description. Cheers. But I'm going to tell you, she's saying behaviors. So I'm going to tell you the type of one type of single mum to stay away from. I call it the plenty of fish single mum. These are the ones that I bag because I've had a little bit of experience bagging and tagging these back in the day when I was doing a bit of Steve-O stuff. You know the ones. The ones that will invite you over to the house after uh, five sentences on plenty of fish. Uh, you turn up there, it's uh, it's 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night on a Sunday. She opens the door. She's wearing like a, a pink sort of bathrobe or something and she pokes her head out the door and, and she looks around so the neighbours don't see and she fucking pulls you in the house. She pulls you through the house. You can hear this sort of banging noise. What the, what's that? Go, oh, no, that's just little, um, that's little Jason and Bryson. They're in the, um, I've locked him in the room there with the Nintendo Switch. Don't worry about them. And then you got little Barry Jr. Little Barry Jr. is asleep in the next room. He's six years old. He's lying there with his Ninja Turtles blanket on, right, with his lamp light and his stars on the roof. She's locked little Jason and Bryson in the room with a Switch. 
and a pizza, two pizzas from Domino's, just throwing them in the door. Shut up. Mum needs to get serviced, right? Mummy's friend's coming over. Pulls you through the house. She takes you into the bedroom. She takes her robe off. Nothing there. Nothing on. So she didn't walk around the house with the kids and everything. With um, Or she got some real just stinky thing in with a butt plug in and all this sort of shit going on. All right? Pulls the um, pulls the robe off. Derobes. You get it done. You're just bam, 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 bam. Slam and guts, right? You are just absolutely splitting it in half. Her head's hitting the wall. Bang, bang, bang. All like that. Little little Barry, he's lying in bed. Oh, fuck, fuck. He's getting um, a, a damage for life here and his mum just getting absolutely dug out in the room next to him. <laughs> you know, bang, 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 and your head's hitting the hitting the, uh, the the wall so hard that his bedside table, you know, his little dinosaur figurines are falling over and shit. <laughs> They're the ones to avoid. Then, he says, she often starts arguments over text, which I'm starting to hate. Which brings us to the next type of single mom you want to avoid at all costs. Drama mama. So first of all, WTF, you should not start hating this behavior from her now. You should hate it from the very beginning. It's tougher to retrain someone how to treat us than to nip it in the bud from the get-go. We teach- You retrain them, you just completely fuck them off, guys. Don't deal with it. Uh, the way I deal with, or used to deal with bad behavior was I used to think of my life like, have you guys seen Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street? And you know when Freddy Krueger's in a nightmare realm and he pulls people into the nightmare realm, he's in control of everything. He controls the physics, he controls, he, he runs the show. And if people don't like it, you know, he gets rid of them. That's what you got to do. Your life is Freddy Krueger's Nightmare Realm. If people aren't going along with it or they're making your life not good or giving you drama, go on, kick them out. Done. People how to treat us. Starting arguments over text is immature behavior. And yes, it is a red flag. Now, if a woman is legit upset, know she's upset, know she needs to walk away to calm down and then does calm down, and maybe doesn't punish you, or just maybe she decides it's not really that big a deal, or maybe she comes back and discusses her needs and her disappointment in a mature way. That's not a red flag. That's how relationships are. You gotta communicate. Just the tip number three, we all have emotions, but women are typically a lot more emotional than men are. It's neurological, biological. That's the way we're wired. It's I a very nice way to say women are absolutely batshit crazy at times. And all of us as men, when you're living with women or you've got long-term girlfriends, so especially when you're living with them, you're going to see some behaviors, some shit where you're just going, what, what is going on? Like, am I in a psychiatric hospital here? That's the way that sometimes they can carry on. Just the completely irrational, completely nonsensical, completely emotional. So that isn't just fucking single mums. That's every fucking chick out there. Wasn't there during the creation. I am just the messenger. I'm just the decoder. So yes, a woman is allowed to have feelings just like you're allowed to have feelings, but it's how she expresses those feelings that counts. Is it mature or is it immature? Is it safe for you or is it unsafe for you? Men can be the victims of abuse yes, from women. Yes. It happens a lot. And lady- I would say, I'm gonna be, hot take here but i'm gonna say it's the majority of abuse because it's it's mental it, it, it's it's a verbal assault a lot of the times and mainly just keep like i've seen guys literally going to the psychiatric boards guys end themselves over chicks is that not abuse i don't know what is financial abuse spending the guy's money stealing money in separations this happened to me and i've heard it happen to heaps of other guys draining bank accounts taking all the money gone shit like that it's the most nastiest, abusive behavior. But no, it's, it's men. Men are the bad ones. And sure, there are dickheads out there who do horrible things. But you don't see on the news a lot all the bad things that women do to men. So I don't know. Go figure, guys. Please, if you are watching, or gentlemen, if you think a woman should hear this next bit, please share this video. Ladies, you know darn well you can be rational. You can moderate your feelings. Because guess what? When you do that, you do that with other women. Because if you treated other women the way you treat your men sometimes, you would have no friends. You know this. I know this. Don't treat your man poorly. Think about this, and I'll, and I'll talk about it, not even in relationships. Think about when you're, on a, when you're dating, right? You're out there, you've um, uh, you set up a date, a time, and five minutes before you get to the date, they someone rings, uh, they give you a text message, oh, I can't come, mum's dead. 
or whatever bullshit excuse you know you get you get with the flake. Oh my um, I used to get this one quite a bit. Oh my uh, my sister broke up with her boyfriend or her husband or my best friend broke up with their husband. I need to go over there right this second. I need to console them. I need to rush her over. I'm sorry. What do you do? But think about all the things and the little behaviours or snarky things that women have said or done to you over the years, whether it be wives, whatever. If a guy did that to you, one of your friends, number one, you'd be you'd be in the car park. You'd be um, it'd be UFC, all right? It'd be on. You wouldn't put up with it. I'm gonna tell you, just excommunicado. You, you wouldn't deal with it. You wouldn't have these people in your life. But as men, we put up with limitless amounts of bullshit just to have a woman in your life because a lot of guys are scared to be alone or scared of the unknown or scared they won't get another girl. And they put up with so much shit, whether it's single mums or fucking not. Be as kind as you would want to be treated. Do unto others as you want to be done unto. Well, Anna, he should have been up. No, you should have made that point clear a long time ago how important it was and that if you couldn't make it, you were going to be disappointed or that you would understand truly that his health is important. His work is important. Sorry, I'm going on a rant here because I want to shake people. No, nah, she ain't on a rant, mate. That's just me warming up what she's carrying on. But I love ranting. What are we saying here? Why I can't understand why men get themselves into situations with with women who have horrible decision making. It isn't just a single mum. It's not they got a kid. Yes, that is not. That's a detriment, right? That's a that's a negative. But it's just the decision making that's gotten that person there. That's for me personally. It's like you made a whole your whole life. You made all these bad decisions to end up. And society's like, oh, she's just a single mum. She can't afford a rent. Oh, she's a single mum on welfare. How did you how did you get there? Your decisions, your life. We've got to take courage of that. No accountability. For them, that's what annoys me. It's it's the accountability, but I know uh, I don't know this guy personally. So my friend Larry, that I always talk about, good old Lazar, leisure suit Lazar. He was telling me the other day about his mate, all right, who I think he had three kids himself. He got on with this um this chick who had like four kids, and they've all done this commingle thing, and it's going to shit now. A couple of years later, like, and he's this guy's just like fucking hating his life, and he's worried that he's gonna you know, fucking end it or something, and was telling me it was the worst, like, decision he could ever make. This is from Larry. Larry's waking up a little bit, by the way, guys. Slowly, slowly. But why put yourself in a situation, you know, and this chick that he's with, so, you know, the guy, the guy, he's no, he's just a normal dude, right? He's no Chad or anything like that. Um, he's no oil painting, but he's just a normal Aussie guy. And he got with this chick. She I reckon she'd be 150 kilos, massive, like, because I've seen her, I was at a function and he brought her there. And I was like, someone's fucked that enough times to have four kids with it. Oh, that's what I, that's another thing that gets me. You see, guys will fuck anything and have kids with anything. You, 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 you at home, sick of you. <laughs> what you've done, what you do? Putting your little pecker everywhere and sh shooting your baby batter around. Keep it, keep it in your pants, mate, with these big fatties. You can do them. Think about it, you know, you're down at Westfield, right? Or you're down at some shopping center somewhere and, you know, down at Pakenham, Frankston, Blacktown, Logan, whatever Bogan area you want to be in. And you see some single mum with a massive gunt, you know, and she's walking along and she's probably 200 kilos, stinks like a bin, but she's got fucking five little kids running around, like little two, three, four year olds, you know what I'm talking about. And I think to myself, some guys fuck that. And had kids with it. I'm pretty sure she wasn't a swimsuit model before that happened. Before the kids came out. Yeah. Anyway, that's my rant. All right, let's get to the next point. Fellas, if she likes to start fights via text, she is a drama mama. Red flag. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, you know that women also need a little bit more stimulation than men do in general. But for children. a single mom, generally having a kid already provides a lot of stimulation. There's a lot of things you have to think about when you have a kid. So if she has to go to the next mile to create drama on top of that, she's emotionally damaged. Not good. Red flag. So WTF continues. He says, so we get into it after and she ends up bringing the kids, but she tells him she can't fake being positive about it. Now, I'm not sure if he means that he ended up going and meeting them there 
or if she went without him and you know just wasn't happy when she was there because he didn't show up with her i think it's the latter but either way it's actually not a red flag that she's upset about this or that she's disappointed no it is because she's not being okay actually she's sort of advocating here a little bit for women but that is not reasonable this guy worked three shifts in a day or something and needed to have a sleep because he's probably paying for the this chick to be in the house and her kids had little crumb crunches buying them shit but he because he didn't go down to the farmer's market or fucking pumpkin patch or whatever it is he's the biggest dog in the world no that's bullshit as i mentioned before we're allowed to be dis- what guy wants to go to the fucking pumpkin patch tell me that it's like tell me this guys what it's like it's like you're going out with a, a girl even if she doesn't have kids and maybe her friends have kids she could have kids not have kids whatever and it's a sunday afternoon and they want you to go to some little fucking kid's birthday in a park somewhere all right with you know the barbecues and there's fucking 50 kids running around and their parents and shit on the on the playground do you do you think all those guys want to be there do you, do you want to be there? No, you have to go and do all this shit. What guy wants to do that? The things that you go and do just to try and get a little bit of fucking snatch. Single mum, single mum, sloppy single mum gut snatch. Like, come on, guys. A bit of standards. Disappointed. We're allowed to have expectations and we're allowed to have feelings and disappointments. How they're expressed, that's important. And in fact, key point, you actually don't want a woman who's going to fake her feelings with you because then... That's a sign that she's a manipulator or a psychopath. Pretty sure you don't want either one of those. Yeah, if you want to know five ways women tend to manipulate you, you will want to watch my video on that. So back to WTF. He says, she basically told me I hurt her feelings and then she was crying on the way home after seeing other people there together. <sighs> okay, yeah, fair enough. She was disappointed, but... She didn't do her part in letting him know how important this was. If it was that important, she should not have said from the beginning, you know, it's okay if you need to sleep for your work. She would have said, it's really important to me and my kid that you're there with us. So can you really make sure that whatever you need to do at work is done so that you can actually attend this with us? Is that something you can do? Give the guy a chance to succeed. Give him a chance to do what he might want to do so that he can be there for you. Don't like bait and switch him. It's okay if you sleep. And then when he actually does need to sleep, you crap on him. Uh, no, 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 no. And no. And he reminded her that it wasn't that he didn't want to go. It was that he needed to sleep for his job, which brings us to the single mom type number four. You want to avoid it at all yeah, costs. Come on then. The read my mind. Now, yes, most women are guilty of this at some point. Women somehow think because we are better at being intuitive and reading hints in people that we somehow are expert mind readers. We're not. We're not at all. Ladies, we're not mind readers. We might think that some... Fucking... No, I'm not saying it. Something's off, <laughs> but the reason we're thinking that's off is not actually the reason it's off. We notice that something's off. Yes, a lot of men don't notice that part, but... We use our own perception and interpretation and experiences to project a meaning on that when it's not actually true. Tip number four for both men and women. Yes, we are more intuitive about the subtleties of human interaction and behavior, but we're not always right about what it means. Stop assuming, or if you're going to assume, give the person the benefit of the doubt and assume positively. That's what you would want. So she didn't communicate in... They're intuitive. Intuition is um, going off their own bad behaviours and getting a bad gut feeling about something happening because they've done bad shit in the past. So guys, if a woman's accusing you of going out, um, banging chicks, whatever it is, and you didn't even have a chance to do that, maybe if you, if you are doing it, hey, yeah, fuck, whatever, do what you want. But if you're not doing it and they're um, you know, saying all this shit, um, well, you know, that's a massive tell that they're either A, they've done it before and they don't have good... A good past with being ethical. I'm gonna tell you, they're blatantly doing it now. You hate to think that. You hate, you know, oh, no, she said she doesn't cheat and she doesn't like cheaters and she's been cheated on before, all that bullshit. It's, it's a cover up. It's just so you never you never get the scent of anything bad happening because they lay it on early. Um, I've been with women like that who will sort of put all oh, the whole sob story on up front and then it turns out they're doing all that shit. And a number of single moms that I've talked to, or women with children that I've talked to, you see single moms, I guess, who have confessed to me 
and talked about their ex-husbands like they're absolute little bits of shit and have told me that they were losers and they were cheating on them is it'll blow your mind guys it'll blow your mind in advance that this was important and then she crapped all over him when he was bound to fail and assumed he'd know better um no just the tip for men single moms expect you to step up even more for their kids oh, than no. for them. that's just part of the package deal so, w so it's the shittest deal in the world why do it why do it guys and then guess what you step up for the kid you do everything that you should be doing you take that kid on as your own because you're a good little man you're a good little boy right you're a good little boy you're a head pat right you get a little pat on the head you're doing the right thing you're raising someone else's kid she said i had this one single mom say this to me something she goes the best kind of man a real man is a man that can love someone else's kid like his own that's a real man i laughed in her face i said are you kidding me or what <laughs> But you step up and guess what happens? You break up and they, that kid's wrenched out of your life in five seconds. So you've gone and invested all this time, money, you've gotten involved, you thought you were doing the right thing. What society tells you, guess what? You have no right to talk to that kid again. And that could be very hard for some people. So you don't just uh, lose the girlfriend or whatever, you, you, you're the wife, wife with the kid, whatever. The, their kids are gone. They've got to make sure you can't have them and you can't have any access or talk to them. And you probably shouldn't because they're not yours. But that's, that's, that's a huge risk. And a lot of guys go through that. And, and that's what I'm talking about too. When I was telling you about Larry's mate, Larry's mate, the reason why he's so torn up about it is he loves the kids. He loves this other woman's kids. He can't stand her, but she's got a couple of little kids and he's gotten really fond of them. He's been around for two or three years and he can't fathom not being around. He thinks that the kids love him and they're going to be distraught if they break up so he can't leave and all this sort of shit. So it's, it's a really bad situation to get yourself into. And I mean, my, 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 my last rant before I let this run for a bit is, Single moms are selfish. They don't, a lot of them don't have integrity or honor or consideration for you. They might have it as long as you're towing the line. But the second the second you're not doing what they want or, or whatever book they're reading, you're not doing the things in the book, you know, or what love languages and all this bullshit, you're gone. You're done. You are cut off at the knees. You are gone. No matter what you've done in the past or how good you've been, they're not going to care about you. So be aware of that, guys. TF continues, they talked about this weeks before, she knows he works long hours, his job requires him to pay attention because there's chemicals involved and it can be dangerous if he screws up, so sleep is super important. In fact, he actually fell asleep at the wheel driving home, which he failed to tell her about <sighs> until after this incident occurred. But guess what happened? She didn't believe him. Type of single mom to avoid number five. Me, videos. me, None me. Of them. Not any I don't have kids that I know of. Wait, I've always wanted to say that. Anyway, okay. Anyway, selfish. However, we all must take responsibility for our own actions. So here's one of two things that could have happened here. One, do differently or wish you had done differently for your own integrity and his all right. boundaries. All right. So who cares, right? I've basically gone through everything. She's, she's just cracking on saying the same points over and over again. So why should you avoid single mothers if you are a single man or if you are a single parent who is not interested in dating a single mother and can attract women who don't have children i know not, not everybody can or doesn't want to date that they want to date i understand this so i understand that men with children might want to date a woman with children because they understand their co-parenting split and all that sort of shit i'm not being realistic here because i know a lot of other creators and channels will say single mom's bad every single mom's bad no they're not but the things to be that I'd watch out for are the ones that have blatantly told you that they've uprooted their kids, young children, out of a former husband's life and just kicked that guy's ass to the curb. Because guess what? That's going to be you. Even the, I, I can't fathom that as a man. I, if I had children, I would stick. I would stick around. Like until at least a little bit grown. But I know a lot of people don't agree with that. But that's what I would do. Women they get bored or they get um, resentful. Or he's not doing housework. He's only working uh, sixty hours a week. But he's not. He's not fucking coming in and putting the dishwasher on. And he's not taking the bin out on time. He missed bin night or whatever it is. Or he plays a game because he wants to relax. And they get sick of you because you're not working or giving them things because you're working so hard to provide. And they drop the guy on his ass. So someone who was laying their life on the line for them being a provider to a family, 
because men sacrifice whether people whether women will accept it or not men sacrifice a lot a lot of stress you got to keep a roof over a family's head you got to pay mortgages you got to pay for everything you've got to make sure kids are dressed and gone to school and all that sort of stuff and if they can just get rid of that guy like that like fuck him off and other things too like you hear these women saying and that they a lot of these um separated women with kids single moms now, they've probably been single for two or three weeks or something. They're out getting pounded on dating apps. And they're, and they're telling me, because, I've, hey, I've done it. Like, the low-hanging fruit, guys, you've got to take it every now and again. They're telling me how the husband's a bastard and uh, he didn't do it for her and he was out of shape and he was boring and she was out rooting other blokes. I will tell you this shit. Anyway, guys, that's just something to keep your eyes open for. I know a lot of you guys love your single mums. Thank you very much for watching, guys. See you in the next one.